Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about growth hacking. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, it's just a buzzword, it doesn't really mean anything, but I assure you there's a sort of, uh, there's a methodology and a thinking and philosophy behind it, uh, growing your social media and digital media marketing presence um, from an organic point of view. Obviously, advertising and paid sponsorship play a role. Uh, but essentially growth hacking is more about discovery rather than what kind of discovery it is. So I'm going to start by trying to break down uh, where the term came from and a bit of the background and then give you some examples about the growth aspect and the hacking aspect. So here we go. Next slide. So growth hacking. Well, the term growth hacking was created by Sean Ellis in <clears throat> excuse me, 2010. He is most commonly known as the creator of the Dropbox. Uh, you might have used Dropbox. It's a file sharing system um, or document sharing system, which sort of allows you security uh, from in a third party sense. Hacking or growth hacking is generally a term described uh, for very early stage stages of a startup that's because um, startups are notoriously low on budget and but do have time and usually connections and other methods of uh, trying to attain clients and customers uh, which is the ultimate goal of growth hacking um, it's, that, it's just that it's done in a digital form so, it's usually organic, so they can reach new markets, and new markets um, means that you have to do your own research rather than rely on a third-party advertising platform to try and match you with um, their existing users or followers, which doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get an optimised or the ultimate um, reach for uh, your business in the shortest amount of time, really, because it's growth is not just about reaching people, but it's you doing it in a short period of time. The growth hacking aspect is. There you go. So it's the process of reaching out to markets through innovative and less conventional use of digital technology. Um, innovative and less conventional means, uh, yes, you established yourself or you haven't established yourself on, on an existing platform that's popular. So you need to seek out and be first um, to use other technologies or other avenues uh, using technology to reach customers before other people do usually is the um, ideal way to do it so that that's because it is, so ultimately that means that uh, growth hacking includes formulating new analysis to determine its effectiveness and maintaining existing growth that's the growth aspect if you're not analyzing if you're not um, uh, looking at the feedback you're getting, you're not going to get optimised growth or much growth at all. What you need to do is really see whether those new experiments and tests that you're doing with your digital technology uh, when trying to reach a new market space actually works and how well it works and whether you can replicate it or repeat it or which parts of it you can continue to use and expand in other ways. That's the analysis part. So I'm going to go now back and go back uh, go and talk about what the growth part of it is and break that down. So growth in the digital marketing uh, sense refers to gaining an audience for your new brand in a short space of time by specifically targeting individuals or groups with the intent of converting the growth to sales at some point. Now I've got an asterisk there because essentially what that means is that whatever growth you're doing, it, it, you need to assess that it will um, the idea of the growth is to reach the markets that will convert to sales faster than others, essentially. So, the growth requires the use of technology to discover new, discover new marketplaces. That means new platforms, new groups of people that might be interested in your product, new, um, just the traditional, in the traditional sense of trading. Travel to new markets, find new people. Talk them into liking your products, see what they sell, just generally networking in the digital sense. But it requires a knowledge of direct and indirect sales techniques. So this is the interesting part of digital, uh, of doing your own organic 
growth is they you essentially have to do two things one is attract people in an indirect way um, and the other is uh, once you've done that uh, and you've got your funnel the top of your funnel which is your market then you have to know how to use the technology and the growth to convert it into your sales so this requires knowledge of inbound and outbound marketing the inbound part is where you're attracting the people or you're gaining interest through what you're doing as a brand, how you're behaving in the marketplace uh, and how you're going to um, get people to come to you. The outbound marketing refers to all the advertising, refers all of the effort that you make to go out and get clients reaching to market. So really, essentially, when I say that you know it's all about discovering new markets, it's not just discovering new markets by going to them. It's discovering new markets and getting them to come to you. That really is the essence of the difference between doing uh, marketing in a traditional sense and doing it in a digital world. In the digital world, you want people to come to you in an easy way to give them information about your business. Obviously, that's true of traditional marketing too, but it works much better in the digital space. And the last part of the growth part is it requires the use of automated systems in general, but mainly for analysis. Uh, you need to be able to crunch your numbers as it is, as, it's, as it were. Uh, you need to be able to uh, interpret and analyse the results you're getting, other than how many people like your page or uh, you know how many times your content has been shared. Those are very, very... Um, loose and um, rather ineffective ways to actually measure how successful your growth is, uh, simply because the, the sharing and liking does not necessarily uh, imply interest in your brand. Shock, but it's true. Okay, so uh, the next, the hacking part. This part of growth also includes uh, updating your knowledge on uh, the systems that you're using and that's part of the analysis process as well. So really this concludes part one of this video. Uh, hopefully I should get this in, in three parts. Hopefully no more than that. So next we're going to go into the uh, hacking part and then later on we'll go through examples of growth hacking in the digital space the growth and the hacking part again separately so uh, watch the next part and there should be a link come up in the playlist somewhere visit our website have a look at our basic plan as well or just continue to the next part